If you're looking to purchase a property but do not know how much you qualify for, then you're watching the right video. We will analyze your income and current debts and based on that, determine what loan size and price you'll qualify for. This is a great way to run your own numbers so that you can compare these figures to what the lender is going to tell you. Before we go into the example, please be sure to hit the like and follow button because Please, my life depends on it. All right, so let's look at this example. So let's say your income is $80,000 per year. You're gonna to wanna to know what your monthly income is. So you divide that by 12, that comes out to $6,666 per month. That's your gross income, do not reduce the taxes. Then you're gonna to need to know what your obligations are. This is any debt associated with like credit cards, auto loans, another mortgage. So here we have a $40 a month credit card payment. That's your minimum payment on your credit card plus a $400 auto loan that totals to $440 per month. And so your debt to income ratio is gonna be your monthly debt over your monthly income. And if you're looking for the minimum debt needed to qualify, you're gonna to wanna to take your monthly debt, it's gonna to equal to debt to income ratio times your monthly income. And I would wanna stay in the range of 40% to be able to know what you qualify for. And so you'll do 40% times $6,666 and then that's going to provide you the maximum debt that you qualify for. So that's going to be your mortgage payment, principal and interest, tax and insurance, things of that nature. And then we can't forget about your other debt. So we have to take into consideration the $440. So you technically only qualify for $2,200. $26 um, because you have to reduce the auto loan and credit card. So this is going to be what you qualify for for principal and interest, taxes and insurance, PMI. So let's take an example of a $220,000 loan size. Let's say you want to do 5% down to stay in the conventional product and $250,000 loan size with the same 5% down. If you want to see what the price is for that loan size, divide your loan size by um, the difference of your 5% down. So 100% minus 5% comes out to 95%. So that's gonna give you 231,578 for a purchase price. And then for the other example, it's gonna be $263,157. So that's your purchase price. The importance of this is because you need to factor in taxes and insurance. So I just use a 3% just to be conservative. So I'll do 3% of that. That's gonna give you your yearly number, but then you need to divide that by 12. So in the first example, it's 578 a month and the other one is 657 per month. PMI, I'll just use $100 per month. Uh, and then your principal and interest. Here, you'll take your loan size and plug it into a mortgage calculator. You can just find that in Google and do 7.5%, which is kind of like the going rate right now in the market, 30 year fixed. So that's gonna give you a principal and interest payment of 1,538 for the first one, 1,748 for the second one. We need to total that to see where we land. So the first example is gonna give us $2,216. And then for the other example, it's gonna be $2,505. So the first example is below that. So you know you qualify for that. The second one's slightly above. So we need to, let's double check our work to see where we're landing to get that exact ratio. So total debt, you gotta add those mortgage payments um, and your other debt to 440. So that comes out to 2,656 for the first example and then $2,945 for the second. Don't forget your income, it's $6,666. So your debt to income ratio is gonna come out to, on the first one, 39% and 44% on the second one. So we know we're good on the first one. The second one's slightly high. So let's see what we need to do. Let's assume you pay off your auto loan, that $400 that you have. And let's see how that helps your ratios. So let's remove that from the analysis. So you do your mortgage payment, uh, 2216, which includes principal interest, PMI and all that, plus $40, which is your credit card payment. And so that puts your first example at 2,256, your second one at 2,545. 
So let's see what your DTI comes out to. So for this first example, it's 33%. And for this second example, it's 38%. So guys, this is a great way to see what you need to work on. If you're looking for a house at a particular price point, but your ratios are too high, then you know what you need to eliminate. Run your numbers to see how the ratios look if you decided to pay off an auto loan or credit card and see if that makes a difference. Again, this is also a great way to double check your lender. If you run your own numbers and you're at, let's say 33% DTI, but the lender's telling you're at 50%, then you know something's off. What you talking about, Willis? For example, when I purchased my second property, the lender was telling me that my DTI was high, and basically we figured out that the first lender on my first property had my mortgage listed twice on my credit report. Oh, hell no. So if I wouldn't have asked the questions, I could have been at risk of a decline for a high DTI, which was not the case. So guys, if you have any questions on any particular scenarios you need help with, Please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to help you guys out. Peace.